Why does Bengaluru flood? Cut! Cut! Oh, sorry, sorry. Why do some parts of Bengaluru flood? And there are three reasons. Location, location, location. Let's look at this cool map. It's not the moon, nor Mars. These aren't craters on the moon. This is Bengaluru. Really? Not convinced? Let me make it a little easier for you. This is Majestic, Jayanagar, Silk Board, Tin Factory, ITPL, and this is the valley. Let me make it even clearer. I'm going to color the valleys in blue. This isn't water, but when there's heavy rain, this is exactly how it will look. Whoa, now I get it. The topographical map really makes things very clear. This is 1990 and all the black dots are built up area. And you can see that all the people live on top, on the ridge. There is almost no black on the Blue Valley. As they say in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. Now let's see what happened over the past 30 years. Oh my God, that was fast. But the action stayed in city center Bangalore and even if you lived really far away, which in Bangalore terms is barely six or seven kilometers from city center Cabin Park, you still lived on the ridge. But now see what happens near the year 2000. I'm going to play it very slowly. The outer ring road ORR arrives and it creates a circle around the city. And suddenly, a small town which was growing outward from the center into the suburbs but always staying on the high ground, suddenly got itself a nice round boundary and began to fill up. Now see what happened from 2000 to 2005. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, what do I see here? This is the Madiwala Agara tank system, in fact, or the Madiwala Agara waterway. And I suddenly see a lot of black on it. And so can you guess what happened in 2005? Yes, we had flooding. Absolutely no surprise at all. Now let's see what's happened in the 10 years since 2005. Oh my God. Oh Mahadeva Pura. That was really fast. Very few cities in the world have seen such rapid growth. If you look closely, we took the Silicon Valley thing a bit too seriously. We actually began living in the valley where the water flows when it rains heavily. I know that entrepreneurship is all about taking risks, but perhaps we took a bit too many risks about where we located our homes and offices. Till about 2003, 2004, we stayed on the ridge. We should have been called the Silicon Highlands. But post 2004, you can see that we've moved into the valley. Again in 2017, we had the next flood. And where did it happen? Surprise, surprise. It happened where the outer ring road intersected several waterways. Aren't these maps cool? I really want to thank Raj Bhagat and the team at WRI India for producing these beautiful maps. And for some reason, they stopped in 2015. But I think we all know what happened between 2015 and 2022. We got more black on blue. So a good way to understand where the floods are likely to happen is wherever there is black on blue. Many of you are very good at predicting the stock market, at currency rates, at the housing market, at IPL matches. How many of you are willing to predict what is going to happen in 2023? Where will it likely flood if we have even 80% of the rainfall in this year? You want to guess? The answer is location, location, location. So when next year's monsoon comes along, I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be on the high ground on a ridge, sipping a nice filter coffee. I hope you guys have decided where you want to be. But more seriously, how do we reduce our dependence on Mahadeva, whoever the great God may be, to prevent us from getting flooded? Surely there can be some human engineering to solve this problem. 
And yes, there is. And we'll find out more in the next episode about that. Before I go, the reason these blue valleys are called the flood plains, because they flood. If you really wanted a black and white answer as to why some parts of Bangalore flood, I hope I've given you at least a black on blue answer. It's all about where the black hits the blue. Let's go.